Hey, Barbara. How are you? I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, Dorado. Just busy as usual. Seems like everybody who's walked through the door had a cold or some type of upper respiratory tract thing going on. Well, it's that time of year. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. But I am so glad you stopped by. I did a physical on a new patient this morning. It made me think about you. It was a 52-year-old male, pretty healthy, somewhat overweight, so we're working on that piece. So I went through his history and physical, and at the end, I asked him if he'd ever gotten screened for prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. He said that he hadn't, and asked me if I thought it was the right thing for him to do. Seems like more and more men have been asking me that question, and with all the confusing information, screen, don't screen, these men really want to know what they should do about screening for prostate cancer. Yeah, we've been getting quite a few calls at the American Cancer Society about that exact issue. I bet you are, but I definitely know what I used to recommend. You just automatically screened every man over 50, right? You got that right. Well, instead of automatically screening every man, the American Cancer Society actually recommends that clinicians talk with men about both the potential benefits as well as the known limitations associated with testing, and then allow those men to decide about screening based on their personal preferences. That's exactly what I've been reading, but what exactly should I be telling them to help them make that decision? Well, they should understand that there are some clear potential benefits, okay. and that is finding cancers, particularly potentially lethal cancers, at an earlier stage may make the difference between dying or having to deal with metastatic disease. Mm -hmm. There's also the issue of the peace of mind that some men have simply from knowing their screening status. Okay, that makes sense, but I think that's pretty much what we've always told them about screening, but now there seems to be some clear concerns and limitations, so what should I tell them about that? Well, they need to understand that there definitely are limitations associated with screening, okay. and a lot of those relate to false positive PSA results. Mm -hmm. So what many people don't appreciate is that two out of three men who have a PSA over four will eventually be found not to have prostate cancer, but they only know that after they they've undergone more evaluation. Mm -hmm. But evaluation almost always includes a prostate biopsy, so we end up doing a lot of unnecessary biopsies. In addition, even when we find cancer, many of those cancers are of the slow-growing variety that might never have caused that man any harm if he hadn't been screened and had it detected. However, a lot of men have difficulty with the idea of not doing anything, yeah. so they end yeah. up undergoing unnecessary treatment. And then finally, there's just the anxiety that's associated both with the screening process as well as with being told that you may have cancer. Mm -hmm. That's very helpful. I, I never really looked at it in terms of those extra biopsies and false positives. So when should I start talking to these men about this informed decision? Well, the American Cancer Society recommends that for average risk men, uh -huh. they begin having this discussion at age 50. For men at higher risk, that is African American men or men who have a family history of prostate cancer in a relative under 65, uh -huh. those men should start having this screening discussion at age 45. And then for the highest risk group, men who have more than one relative affected, those men should start thinking about this at age 40. Okay, that's helpful, but it brought to mind another question. Another patient, age 65, class 4 heart failure. He asked me what I thought about screening, and I told him I didn't think he should get screened. Well, sounds like you gave him good advice. The evidence is pretty clear that men who have less than a 10-year life expectancy have very little likelihood of benefiting from screening. And that includes men who have that limited life expectancy based in part on age or based on having severe heart disease or lung disease or other life-limiting problems. I'm glad to know I was on the right track on that one. But what about all of these other men who are otherwise healthy is there anything else I should be telling them to help them make the right decision for them? Well, in addition to talking about the potential benefits and limitations of screening, it's also important for those men to think about what their own particular values and preferences might be. Hmm. I want to be screened because it's important for me to know if I have any kind of cancer. If I have it, I want to be treated. I don't care if there are side effects. On the flip side, a man who chooses not to be screened may say, if we can't tell him that he's definitely going to benefit from the screening and treatment, then he doesn't want to risk undergoing treatment and have those possible side effects. And we'll only want to be screened if we can tell them that that screening is for sure going to be beneficial. Hmm. I don't want to be screened. 
You know, I, I don't want to risk suffering side effects from a treatment for a cancer that might not even affect my health. No news is good news. Those are good examples. My patient this morning definitely fell into that first category. He wanted to be screened no matter what. So for those men, have the guidelines from the American Cancer Society changed? Well, yes, there have been some changes. Okay. Uh, we still recommend PSA as the primary mechanism for screening, but the digital rectal exam is now considered optional, and it's up to the man and his clinician as to whether or not to use that in addition to PSA. Okay. Um, PSA rescreening is also changed in that we used to say that every man who was screened should be rechecked annually. Mm -hmm. Now we base that rescreening interval on the PSA level. So mm -hmm. for a man who has a PSA of 2.5 or less, mm -hmm. if they don't have other risk factors, then that man can be safely screened every two years. Uh, for a man who has a PSA of 2.6 to 3.9, if they have no other risk factors, they should be screened annually. If they have risk factors, you might consider referring them for further evaluation. And then finally, men who have a PSA of 4 or higher should still be referred for a possible biopsy. So should I revisit that conversation at any time with them? Well, actually, yes, because things change over time. There could be new evidence that develops. The man might have someone in his family who's diagnosed with prostate cancer, or frankly, his preferences might change. Got it. Hey, Dorado, thank you so much for stopping by and for all of this good information. At our next staff meeting, I really want to share this with our partners so that we can make sure we're giving these men the best information to make an informed decision about prostate cancer screening. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, and there's some great decision aids for patients and for clinicians on our website at cancer.org. There's also our prostate cancer guidelines as well as other information, so take a look at it. I think it'll be a great help. I sure will. Thank you. Oh, well, good to see you, Barbara. You take care now. You Bye -bye. too. Bye.